Hello and welcome. My name is Mark and welcome to the ultimate guide to GoDaddy SEO. I've been so excited about making this video. It's been a while in the production, so here we are. And just to begin, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about what this video is going to involve. And the aim is that if you have no SEO background, but you have a GoDaddy website, I'd like to show you how to rank it and how to get good results for your business. I'm going to cover a few basics of SEO. You can also go through the chapters that will be below the video if you want to skip through, because I know this is quite a long one and I appreciate that. Just a little bit about me, just to prove to you that I'm not an internet charlatan. I'd like to show you the stats for my website, which is a small business for the last month. So here you can see that I've had just under 900 hits from Google in organic search, just under the blue arrow right there. And it's not bad, to be honest. I think depending on what these clicks are, that should be enough for you to run a business and get a decent amount of traffic and hopefully money for you into your business. I spent the last two or three years working exclusively with my GoDaddy site for SEA and it's given me a lot of experience and that's why I want to share these tips with you right now. And if you've got any problems during this whole process, please feel free to write a comment under the video and I will get back to you ASAP. I promise. So the first thing I would encourage you to start is to just come up with a list of keywords for your business or for your website. Why don't you just start off with 10 that will then whittle down to five. And the reason for this is that we'll then be optimizing based around those keywords. So for example, if you run a business that sells pet foods, you might want keywords like hamster foods. If you're a gutter cleaning business, you might want to go for something like gutter cleaning London. Just get a piece of paper and get thinking, what would my customers search for to try and find me? If you're stuck, work around the product or that specific area, like I said, gutter cleaning near me or gutter cleaning Liverpool, for example. The place to really then go on to and decide, well, are those keywords any good? There's a great piece of, of, of freemium software called Ubersuggest. So what you can do here is just type your keyword in the first page. You'll get some very specific information about volume traffic for your keyword. And we'll then decide whether it's something good, whether it's something we don't want to pursue. So as an example, I'm going to look at this keyword, which is Croatian translation services. I'm going to look at the location for the UK because that's where I am. Looking at this phrase keywords, I can see that 30 people per month search for this. It's not huge, but it might be useful working work. This is good. Now, if I look at the difficulty, I can see that that's 15 and easy. That's really good. We don't want to target keywords that are too difficult because our site is not going to be able to rank for them. Um, we can also see some other data and suggestions. Some of these might be really good, but I would probably choose this keyword to rank for because we know it's easy to rank for. We know it has reasonable volume. It's not huge, but it's okay. And another thing that's important to consider is that not all things that people search for have an inherent use in terms of money. So I know from experience that people who are searching for this phrase will want to buy a translation, but let's look at some other suggestions that we have here. You could rank for creation hello translation. We're not going to want to go for that because that's clearly someone who just wants to translate the word hello into Croatian. There are things like travel phrases as well. We know they're probably not going to be connected to a sale. And this is the same that, for example, you might be selling a product and you might want to, for example, go for something like a review. If you had like a Volvo V40 review, that would be good. But be smart, try and figure out what people want from their search points. And once you've got your list of five keywords, let's go on to the next step. And any questions as always, write in the comments and we'll take it from there. Now that you've chosen your five keywords, it's really time to get to work. So what you're going to do with each one of those five keywords, once you've used Ubersuggest and decided that they're a reasonable target for SEA, is to create a page on your website for each of those keywords. So if five pages, that's going to mean five keywords for you. In GoDaddy, you have the options of either doing these as a blog post like this one I'm doing here. You can also list them as main pages. For example, there are ones that I've got here for different languages and different titles. I don't think there's a massive difference, but there's slightly less customer visibility if you're using blog posts, just FYI. I've noticed that my keyword for this page, the whole title is how to get a certified translation of a birth certificate. I've decided that I want to target this. So the really important thing is that your keyword should be the same as the title. And if you're using GoDaddy blog posts, you only get 
one chance to put this in the URL. You won't be able to change this later on, so I recommend to think about this hard and just go through it one time. What I would recommend doing is just creating a blog post with all the information you know about this particular topic. Try and make it relevant and really useful for your customers. You may want to put uh, other links to official sources as well. But basically just try to provide value and information from your user. Give them the information they need, they're looking for. Don't waffle, don't stuff keywords at this stage, which is something that may be recommended by Gerd out of themselves, but don't go for that. Make content that feels natural and get it out there. Once you've done that, you can check in a few weeks and see how it's ranking. You'll probably find that your keywords in your page may not be ranking too high or at all for that keyword. So this is where a secret weapon comes in. And this is why I'd really recommend you use a great product called Surf SEO. I don't work for them. I don't get any money for promoting this, but they create a really, really good piece of software. I think a sub is about $50 per month, something like that. So you can take a subscription out and use it for a month. What you'll get for each keyword is an analysis of your page and there'll be a comparison against the top results for the keywords that you're looking for. For example, you can see here, my page is compared to the number three and number six ranks uh, respectively for this particular keyword. So what you can do is run your page through Surfer and you'll be given a stack of different recommendations to make it improved and to get the ranking up. So here it recommends for me to add some internal links from other pages on my site. This is something that's pretty self-explanatory to do and will help you in terms of rankings. Also one of the best is the recommendations of which keywords to use and how many. For example, it says here I've used birth certificates twice in this piece of content. It recommends I should use it three to nine times. Don't follow these recommendations religiously, but any that you've missed out might be really worth going for. There are other really important things to consider too. It's just here that my content is a bit thin and what that means is that I've got about 650 words of content. I should be aiming much higher, around 1,200 to break into those higher rankings in the top three as we've seen. There's a couple of other points that you might want to put in, but I really recommend for you to follow this report, make the recommended changes that you've got from Surfer, publish and see how it goes and you'll see a ranking shoot up in a few weeks. I'm sure about that. Another top tip that I would really recommend for you is to create a page that shows your business's location, which could be called a location or service page. So this should have some basic information about your business, including where it is, whether it's in Manchester, higher or further afield. And this will really rank you for local terms. So it might be useful for something like hairdressers in Ohio or gutter cleaning services near Manchester. Another tip is I would really recommend um, optimizing this for Surfer SEO, as we did in the last section. So another good thing you can do is to embed a Google map. This proves to Google your genuine business and it shows exactly where you're located. So to do this, what we're going to do is to go into Google Maps, type in your business name. Once you've found the location, you can click on Share for the location, then click on Embed Map. If you click here, this will copy the HTML that we're going to embed into our GoDaddy site builder. Now on your page where you want to add, what you need to do is just click on the plus here to add a section. Then once that comes up, you're going to go into Files and Web, which is just below here. Once you've clicked on Files and Web, you want to click on HTML, that option. I'm not actually going to click on this because it's simple enough to do, but you're going to click on Embed, embed Custom Code, paste in that code that we had from Google Maps, and you'll get a wonderful map to come up just like here. So that's something I really recommend and will really boost your results, particularly for local search, which is probably going to be one of your main revenue streams. So try that out and I think it will be really, really good for you in terms of rankings. I also wanted to include a quick overview and also caveat of GoDaddy's own brand SEO tools, so to speak. So these are also included, and I think that they're not necessarily included for all versions of the site builder. I think you need to pay extra. Um, but all the same, if you take a look and go over to the website builder and go over to settings right here, you can see there's a tab that says get found on Google. If you click on, you can have a look and see the start optimizing button. 
and you might think, great, I'd love to start optimizing my site for SEO. To be completely honest, there are a couple of options, such as adding keywords, where I would say I would not really recommend using these tools. I don't think they're particularly up to date, and using them will probably not help you in terms of rankings. They do give suggestions for keywords, but there's no comparison as far as I know with other sites in terms of density. Other points such as using alt tags might be useful or might be recommended, but generally speaking, they give the impression that they'll make massive difference to your rankings in your site. I think it's a bit of snake oil to be honest going on from GoDaddy. I would really recommend using Surfer SEO to optimize your web pages, which we'll look at a little bit later as it covers really useful functional optimization that works. So in case you're already thinking, no, I have SEO tools, let's use those. I'm afraid this might not be the most recommended option to take, so sorry about that. So you've optimized your website, you've picked your five keywords, surely that's it. You're going to get loads of traffic from Google now. Not quite yet, so we're going to move on to the most important section by far, in my opinion, which is off-page optimization. So what this means is that you need links from other websites that go to your website and point to your site, and you might think, well, What's the point? That sounds kind of useless. But these links that you'll get, or backlinks as they're most commonly referred to from other sites, tell Google that your site has authority. It has content on it that other websites want to link to. And it really proves as well that you're a genuine and true business. So you might want to start by taking a look to see how many backlinks you have to begin with. This is a great method you can use to monitor the number of links you have. Go to arfs.com forward slash backlink checker. Free tool, which is really good. Type in your site address, there's mine right there, and we can see how many backlinks the site has. Now this is just going to take a second or two to go through. So this shows here that there's a domain rating between 0 and 100. It's not that important, but it shows that my domain has some authority. This shows how many linking websites there are that provide links, as well as the number of links, and the different kind of places that these links right now are coming from. So if you have no links, you might think, well, how on earth am I going to get another website to link to me? There are several different ways that you can do this. One of the best ways to start off with is by using web directories just to list your business. These are easy to find online. Here's an example of findopen.co.uk I've used. You can register your business and get a link for them for free. Might not be a particularly powerful link, but it's there. One of the most important that you can use is helperreporter.com. So if you sign up for this website every day, you'll get lists of questions from reporters that you can answer and you'll get a link in turn. I have another video for this, so go back to the main page and have a look in my channel pages for the Harrow video if you'd like more info on that. Another place you can go to is by doing something called guest blogging. So what this involves is reaching out to another website and just asking them if they'd let you write a blog post or piece of content for them for free. So I've got an example here. If it's going to load, just quickly from a website called fluent in three months.com and i did a huge piece of content for them which was entitled seven lessons about language learning from six years teaching english it's a big piece of content and if you go right to the bottom you will find there is an icon with my face on and a link to my site just to prove that works if you click on it so Overall, this is one thing you really shouldn't neglect. If you don't build links, your site is not going to rank high. It can seem daunting, it can seem difficult, and it can take a long time to build links, but you really need to do this. Otherwise, your site is not going to do well. Even if you start and just do the directory links and try to find a few of these, that's a great place to start as a foundation. I would not recommend, as a note, buying links from like marketplaces like Fiverr, these sites probably won't do anything for your rankings, and it's just a waste of money. So, there it is. Don't forget about link building, and if you've got any questions, as always, just write in the comments and I'll get back to you. You've optimized your pages. You've got a range of backlinks to your site, and that's a great start. But at the end of the day, everything that you're doing isn't worth it unless you're tracking keywords and seeing how well your keywords are performing. So the really best tool to use for this is Google Search Console. It's very easy to set up and it'll give you all the information about how your site is doing, how many clicks you're getting, where visitors are coming from. So you can have a look at my site here for the last three months, have been about 2,400 visitors. There are loads of really useful things that we can pull from it. 
I'm generally only interested in traffic coming from the UK, just that's how my business works. But let's take a look at the last 24 hours. We're going to select the UK. You can do the same for your site, you know, depending on which country you're operating in. If you're interested only in life as a local business like me, let's click on average position. This is a really useful indicator for us. And the two things that I'm really interested in are the ranking position and whether I've got any clicks. So for the keyword Russian slang, I can see someone clicked in the last 24 hours for this keyword. It's not particularly useful for me in terms of business and clients, but it's nice to know. Here, I can take a look through and see how my keywords are doing, you know, which keywords are doing well. For Marriage Certificate Translation UK, I can see there were three impressions at position 11. Anything outside the top 10 could do with a bit of tweaking, so that might be something I want to revisit and tweak with Surfer for that particular keyword and try to improve that particular ranking or maybe try to get more links in the future. I might also want to look at some other keywords just to check how they're doing. For example, here we can see on the next page, I've got Translation Services Liverpool in position two. That's great, that's up on top. Something I've been working on for a while in terms of rankings. The keyword we were looking at earlier related to Crete, and it wasn't the exact match, but we had Croatian translations, and I'm happy to see that's at position seven right now. As well, I might be able to look through and see, this is so useful because I can find keywords that my site's ranking for. Maybe I didn't particularly target these keywords, but for example, Serbian translation, I haven't optimized any page for that particular keyword, but now maybe I'd want to, because if this keyword is already ranking at position 72, some tweaking, you know, might get it up to 10 plus in future. So it's really useful to check these on a weekly basis just to see how your site's doing and performing. In the beginning, you'll notice that you have lots of low rankings, but over time you'll got an idea of what to optimize your site for so that you can get those good rankings going in place. So the important message here is keep checking, keep optimizing, and don't only optimize once. Keep checking and optimizing to get the best possible results. So in summary, I'd just like to encourage you, if you have a GoDaddy website, that it really is possible to rank. You'll find there are a lot of people out there that are naysayers on GoDaddy and say it's terrible for SEA, it's impossible and terrible to work with. And here's a couple of examples of people that have come out with that statement, but you really can rank a GoDaddy site. It might not be a number one choice. There are other providers out there such as WordPress that do better and a cheaper job, but it really is possible if you follow the information in this guide and elsewhere to get good ranks and good business. So best of luck to you in terms of your optimization. As I've said before, I really recommend using Surfer SEO, working on backlinks and keep checking those results that you get just to see if the tweaks that you've had and have used have had the desired results. So don't forget to subscribe. You're about to see my face pop up. If you click, you'll get more great videos from me like this. But wherever you are, best of luck with your business.